Hello friends, welcome to my next tutorial on data wrangling tutorial series. The ultimate guide to data wrangling with Python using Rust Polish data frame to work with finance and supply chain data analytics. These are the topics we are going to cover in this series. In my very first video, I covered how to create finance and supply chain data using Polar series and Polar's data frame data structure. In today's video, we are going to learn everything about Polar's context and how we can apply Polar's context to view data. So let's get started. I want to call out that you'll find link to source code in video description below and you can reach out to me at github twitter and youtube if you haven't already please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos now just to recap in our last video we covered basics of this typical gl erd diagram and we created some data frame to simulate this data so for example we created location cost center department and we created a ledger data similarly we also covered basics of supply chain processes and we covered how data flows within different tables. Now we are going to create these data frames in later part of the video today. But for now, let's jump onto this code and start working on our polar context. All right, so I'm going to open my previous notebook here. So last time, if you recall, we created a couple of data frames. So first was location. So let me just run this. See, so it created a location data frame. Now similarly, let's go move on to our accounts data frame. So if you recall, it will create 35 different accounts in this format. Now let's go to the department. So now we have location, accounts, and department. Now let's go put it all together and create this ledger data frame. All right, so as you can see, we just created 100,000 different entries, uh, which has the actual ledger data. Similarly, I'm going to create one more ledger, say budget, just for the fun, and I'm going to combine these two together. So we have one com combined ledger table, which is actual data and budget data, and you will see why I did that later, later part of the video. Mm -hmm. So now we have all the data ready. Now let's learn about the Polar data frame context. So Polar has its own DSL, meaning domain specific language, which has two core component, context and expression. So in simple word, what it means that while working with polar, polars, you're always thinking in terms of context and expressions. Now, first you always think about the context and whenever you want to apply some data transformation on mass calculation, then you think about expression, which you can apply over the context. So again, in very simple terms, what is a context? Context is, as name says, is a context on which an expression is evaluated. So once we should see this in action, it will be more clear to you. All right, so let's take our first example. Let's print some rows from our ledger data frame here. DF ledger dot sample, and it's going to print a couple of rows here. All right, so when you look at this ledger data frame, uh, what comes in your mind? That there are, okay, there are rows and columns are out there. So how do we select uh, certain rows from this ledger data frame? And that's what actually select context is. So what is a context? Context is just a way to work with your Polish data frame, like a method which you can apply on your data frame. So for example, out.dfledger.select. And here, as you can see, select is a, is a method. If you read the signature of this particular method, as you can see, it's defined as a method, which takes two different parameters. One is the expression. That means the list of all the expression and named expression. Now, please read carefully. What is an expression? An expression is one or more than call, uh, more than one columns here. Likewise, named expression, they also allow you to pick additional columns here. So the only difference, if you read carefully, one is a positional argument and other is the uh, other one where is the double asterisk is, is the keyword argument. Basically, both of these parameter will allow you to pass the name of your column which you want to select. All right. So let's go select, start selecting a couple of the columns here. Now let's for just for the fun. This is an, you know, so for example, I want to sort this out by physical year. So let's select first column as physical year and let's put in sort because I want to sort my data by physical year. Right. And next thing I want to do, say, for example, I want to sort the next parameter is accounting period. So I want to see by, you know, by year and by accounting period, so January to December. So that's why I'm saying PL dot call and uh, dot sort. And now let's pick ledger. So what I'm doing here, I'm selecting the columns in the order I want to see. So for example, I want to see physical year, accounting period, ledger, organization. I want to see the dollar amount that lost. So as you can see, the dollar amount is in millions. So for example, I want to see like, you know, uh, divided by 1000 and say in 100 K rows or something like it and here as you can see what alias does it allow alias is it allows you to rename the column so basically this is very simple syntax here in select in method you can pass the list of the columns you can sort the different columns and you can give it different name so once you you know please try to run this code it will be more evident to you see the before and after results so what i did simply what i did i just rearranged the data uh, in the format i wanted to do 
So basically just to recap, what select contest allows you to do, it allows you to pick and choose certain columns in the order and you can sort it and you can always rename the columns which you are working with. So that's actually the whole intent of the select context. Now in this example, as you saw, as I rename the column, I lost the previous column. So what if I want to retain the original column and I want to create a transformation, transform column as well. That's exactly the next context come into the picture, which is called with columns. So at with column says is going to allow you to do the same thing what you just did with the select context, but plus whatever transformation you do, those will be added to that existing data frame. So again, just to like take the same example here and I'm going to, you know, just put an example. So I'm not going to choose you know, any other columns which we have did earlier, but I'm just going to copy paste that transformation what I did. So as you can see, if you run this, so what's with column does exactly is going to, you know, display all the rows, uh, which as is, which used to exist in original data frame, plus is going to create an extra column and which will have all the transformation, all the transform value. All right. So this is what with columns uh, context does. All right, so now let's stick to the same example here. For example, there are, you know, as you can see, this data has from all the entries from 2022 to all the way to 2023. What if I want to specifically see certain data values here? So that's where the filter context comes in. So filter context, as the name says, you can filter the data. So for example, I'm going to a DF ledger and I'm going to apply filter function on the DF ledger data frame. So if you read the signature of this method, you can pass the filter condition. Just think about if you're working with SQL. So take one column and put the condition here. So for example, I want to say, you know, take one column, say dfpl.call uh, and pass the, uh, that particular column name here, and then you pass the value. So again, pl.call and say column name equals to ledger. And what if I want to select actuals? Simply you say equals to equals to say actuals, and you can, you know, put the binary and logical operator as well. You can put as many filter condition as you want. So for example, I want to see only actuals data for the physical 2023. So you can combine these two condition here and see is it filters the data based on the condition you provide. Again, you can be creative. You can provide like your own logical and numerical you know, operator, whatever you want. Suppose you want to see our condition. Obviously, it's not going to do any good. It's going to show you everything. So let's change it back to the end. So now, you know, you can, and again, you can mix and match. You can create like, you know, as many um, good thing, beauty about this Rush Polar data frame is, is, is amazingly, you know, very, very fast. All right. So now let's go you know, work on another scenario here. What if I want to see the data grouped by certain fields? So for example, I want to see all the entry by 2023 or I want to see all the entry by actuals. So first let's just filter the data. So I'm only interested to see 2023 actuals. So first I'm going to filter the data and then I'm going to apply the group by on top of that. So please keep in mind, you can, you know, you can cascade the different contexts one after another. So here, if you read the signature of the group by, it expects you the fields which you want to group by, and you can pass more than one fields here. So I'm just going to keep it very simple. I'm going to group it by ledger, and then I want to, you know, pass the aggregation. So then how do you want to aggregate it? Suppose I want to see all the different counts here, or some of the posted amounts here. Please read the signature of this uh, method here. This is very intuitive. So again, ag aggregation, and then you can pass the, um, say, pl.count. So what it will do, it will display the count by that particular uh, column which you have grouped it by. All right, so let's run this out. As you can see, it will tell you all the total row volume by that ledger. Now in this example, we are already filtering the data by actuals and then we are doing group by. So I don't think it's doing the, you know, is the appropriate way to do that. So let's go, you know, let's run the group by on the original ledger data frame. So here, as I said earlier, you can group it by multiple fields here, multiple columns here. So I'm going to aggregate by ledger and physical here. And now let's display the row count. Here you go. All right. So now you can see, so in this example, for the physical year 2023, ledger type equals to budget, there are 24,850 entries out there. Again, as you notice that these are in absurd order, so you want to put some sorting out there. Again, that's the beauty about the Rust Porous data frame. It's very intuitive DSL. You can cascade or chain the methods uh, one after another. So here, for example, you group the data and you aggregate the data, and you can also put the sorting on top of that. So for example, so here, let's take another example here. I just want to, you know, because I was only showing the row count, I want to see the posted total uh, also. All right. So see, so here, like it's giving you one accurate picture. So it's going showing the row count is showing all the posted dollar amount by that particular physical year. Again, you know, I forgot to put the salt here. You can always sort the data by the by any field you like. 
all right but here you guys seeing the complete picture here you can you can aggregate the data by multiple different uh, measures statistical measures all right so i think that's all i wanted to cover that's the main functionalities of the context provided by rust polar data frame there are also some other context which you know once you go into the deep into the language you will find some other meaningful context out there so now let's go back um, this one more thing you know i didn't cover in the last video uh, let's you know try to create this data frame on the supply chain data the, the reason we are doing it because we are going to use it in the next video so let's go create the data frame uh, for this particular this one and again i'm going to fast forward because i've already covered this in previous video here the only reason i'm redoing it here so that i can use this data in our next follow-up videos so similarly as you can see i'm going to create a product category here so as you can see same thing product category i see it's just a collection of different type of products then you create a product the product is a subtype of the product category similarly let's go create a customer database here same thing, you know, very intuitive fields, name, address, phone number, etc, etc. Create one more purchase order, sales order field here. And here, as you can see, you can create like I'm, I have personally created 10 billion records here. So let's try to see that. And depending on your computer memory, um, there's a chance that it may fail. So let's run this. All right, because I looks like I do not have sufficient memory in my computer. So let's uh, Let's try to pick a size which is more reasonable here. Our 10 is obviously too low, but okay, you got the idea that you can create as many data frames as you want. So we have created all the finance data model. We have created supply chain data model. Next follow up videos, what we are going to do, we are going to dive into more complex topics. For example, how to use expressions, how to you know do the mass calculation across different databases and finally we are going to make use of like how we'll do some advanced uh, you know windows we'll learn how to do windows function we'll uh, do some advanced analytics data wrangling and transformation operations all right that's all i wanted to cover in this video today thank you for watching please uh, stay tuned and uh, follow for next set of videos thank you very much